What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's I Am A Comeback podcast. I'm your host, Mark Jennison, with my lovely wife. Kendra Jennison. And last week, so if you know and you hang out with me often, I change like the wind changes, right, all the time. And last week we talked about doing um, the I Am A Comeback podcast. We're going to create a introduction talking about like, well, this is the comeback couples or this is this, but so many things have changed over this uh this past week that brings us to a file, the past five seconds. <clears throat> but so many things have changed in this past week to where like things in my world, things in my life, things in our world are starting to make sense. Although they're falling apart a little bit, they're falling right to where they need to be. And I'm not saying they're falling apart in a bad way. They're falling apart because they're supposed to build and build and build because you continue to do the same thing over and over and over. It's a definition of insanity. I keep trying to do the same fucking shit over and over and over. And the world's like, hey, this isn't working. God's like, hey, this isn't working. The only person thinks it can work is me. So why I'm saying that is because now when we do these I Am A Comeback podcasts and you are the host with this thing, we're going to make this thing something that people are going to want to come share their comeback stories with. So it is only, it, it's critical on this first call that we do, not this first one, we've been doing hundreds of these things. Like it's, it, it's important, extremely important right now that we talk today about what a comeback is. Sure. And I'll talk about that in a second, Um, but I want the podcast to be a place of empowerment where people are showing up and sharing their stories, right? So this is men and women, maybe it could be children, right? As we search and seek for comeback stories out there for high-performing business owners, (coughs) athletes, moms, uh, you know, construction workers, doesn't matter. People who have set out in this world to do something massive is really like who I want to interview and do some stuff with, but there's an underlying just tone of who these people are that we're gonna be searching and seeking for, but I wanna talk about like what it looks like and what it means to be a comeback to you. So this is like from people that struggle with alcohol, relationships, right? Maybe it's some mental health, maybe it's financial recovery, maybe it's divorce, maybe it's grief, uh, maybe it's car accidents that they've mm-hmm. came back from or what, whatever, this, whatever the story is, like that's what I want to gear this thing to because we're making a change and a transformation as you know. When I got home from Florida or wherever I was the other day, California, came home and I opened up that paper, which by the way, I forgot to tell you to bring down for Kevin, but I opened up that paper and I was just showing you like what we're building and where we're going. And now here we are in this place today and I get to talk to you because you are gonna be an equal part of this. You're always an equal part, but like where we build and we build and build and have you come in and be able to help women and open up this thing, I'm just fucking excited about it. So my question to you today is, what is, let's go two ways. There's There's a comeback is what it is conceptually, but there's I am a comeback. Yep. What does that mean to you? To me, it is an ultimate power statement. Truthfully, and of course I live in it every day, so maybe then I'm just used to it by now, but it, to me it's the ultimate power statement of resilience, fortitude, um, determination, you know, all the things that, that held you down at rock bottom. And you're not allowing that to be your story because you know that there's more inside of you to give, there's something greater. There's a greater story there. What is that story? It's I'm come back. You know what I mean? Like watch me come from everything that ever was meant to hurt me, burn me, take me out. And I'm not going to let it, you know, hurt so, me, burn me, learn me. That's hurt it. me, I, burn me, learn me. I, right. I, that's what you learn to me. It. So to me, when I really, really think about it, I mean, it, it to me, I, again, it is just the ultimate power statement. It's something to be super proud of. I absolutely, I'm so proud to walk around in my I am a comeback gear, you know, and I don't wear it for the alcohol portion. For me personally, you know, alcohol has affected my life. And that's kind of where we've ran with I'm a comeback for seven years. Let's talk about that for a second. Because that's like, remember I painted the picture of the the, the flag, right? When I laid it out and I said, imagine this is like a flag. This flag means freedom. Right? And it shows off all this freedom, but here we are stuck in this area, which is the sales. We're pushing and pursuing and building an alcohol program, but it's so much more than alcohol program. I'm staying stuck and staying smaller. Do you see this future? Do you see where we're going, right? This mm-hmm. is where I'm committed to going. But we stayed and played in a place for the past seven years. Well, nine for me. Sure. Seven for you, going on seven for you. Has it been considered an alcohol program to you? Or what, it, like, what does it feel like? You know, at first when I didn't know anything about business or online business or even what I'm a comeback was, I was like, oh, sure, yeah, it's an alcohol program. People, what does that mean? Oh, my husband helps gentlemen get sober, you know. <laughs> um, but now that I've been doing it for seven years along the side with you, it's never really been an alcohol program. 
which has been a really interesting turn of events for me to witness. You know, gentlemen think they're coming in because they have problems getting control or gaining control over alcohol, mm -hmm. only to find out that, hey, it was kind of irrelevant in my life the whole time. I just was focusing on the wrong things, you know? And so, um, yeah, I never, I never really. So when you, <clears throat> as we're marketing this thing out and, and building and going down the way that I want to go with this mm -hmm. and the vision that I have to build this thing into a, a global brand of just empowerment and just like legit, I just asked Kevin and James over here, I said, well, what, you know, what is it? And for me, it's like the world, the planet, the universe, largest, strongest, you guys laugh over there, but like life coaching business, like yeah. a place where we can literally turn your greatest pain into your greatest power. And, and that's what I've been trying to do for my life for a long time. Yeah. But I find myself, this is just gonna pause here. But I find myself when I have to go and stay and play in this place of just alcohol that I actually was keeping myself in a prison, which is why we keep running to these ceilings. Sure. Right? Like, oh, we'll get to a certain spot. Oh, I'll change. I keep trying to optimize what is and scale what is by doing the same shit. But really, what I'm doing is building up, build it up, build it, burn myself. But then finding myself in a place where no longer I'm not in scarcity, I'm not in abundance, I'm not in prosperity, I'm in divinity, but it feels good up here yet. I'm still doing the same thing. Yeah. Right? It's not. Nothing is changing. I'm just focusing on one problem that very few people want to solve that they're so ashamed of. They're so, like, I am not ashamed of I am a comeback. No way. Right? Like, I'm not ashamed of it because it means so much to me. But people still walk around a place where it's very heavy on their hearts. Well, I don't want to wear the t-shirt. I don't really deserve this identity. Sure. I think it's, I think, it, again, that just boils down to the, the story that society had put on drinking alcohol in general. If you need help for, if you need help because you drink X amount of alcohol, then that makes you weak and you should be ashamed of that. And so it's really hard for people to kind of turn that table and say, you know what? Yeah, I used to, I, I used to drink way too much. My focus was completely on drinking and now it's not, you know, there's so much empowerment in coming on the other side of that. And what's really awesome now is now that we're expanding, I am a comeback in coaching and just and just having it be the most elite coaching service online for people who came from a, a place of pain and are not going to relish in that. And we can guide them through, right. you know, this next whole portion of their life. That's, that's I am a comeback. Anybody who refuses to sit in that, wants better, is going to get better, is going to do the work because it is take work. To do that, it, it, to me, it's really, really exciting and it's going to be a lot of fun because like you said, it never sat right with you to just have the alcohol portion. But yeah, to me, it's it's really exciting and to open up this entire I Am A Comeback movement to women, me, um, you know, men who maybe didn't have a drinking problem, but maybe their business wasn't ruined, their marriage wasn't ruined. I was going to ask you a question, right? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the question. So we talk about what I'm a comeback was, you know, there's guys that are alcoholics and there's guys, or I hate that label, but alcoholics and, and there's like a lot of people that struggle with pornography. How would you feel if you walked into the room and I was just beating it to three fat chicks eating cheeseburgers? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, well. Like, would you think that's a problem? Cause there, there's somebody out there that clearly that does it. See, here's what's cool about this, right? This way we get to do that. I get to tell jokes and show another side of Mark because Mark who has to be serious all the time about alcohol, talking about death. This is just the reality. Yeah, and the, the truth is I'm not gonna do that. You know that Obviously. I honor you with everything I have. <laughs> but answer the question. Kevin says you would join. I would drop kick you. <laughs> <laughs> I would literally drop kick you. Um, I'm just sitting on the edge of, edge of our bed and just fucking, there's no three way. greasy ladies with three greasy oh cheeseburgers. They're disgusting. just feeding each Don't other. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely uh, drop kick you. Anyways. So uh, I share that with you. Um, not in, And we make a joke of it, make it light. And the sad part is there's people inside of this world that are actually doing that. Um, but they could also figure this out. So going back to what I'm a comeback is, I want to talk about like what it really is. Sure. Because we say these things, it's like a, it's like a, you call it the ultimate power statement. Mm -hmm. Like ultimate is a great word. International was a word that I used. Global because then I'm thinking in a place of, of size, but ultimate is even above that, transcends that. Um, you know, but really what I am a comeback is, is an idea. Sure. It's a feeling. 
the ideology that you don't ever have to be a victim to where you're at right now so long as you want better? So I'll explain this for you and for these guys, like even James and Kevin. Mm -hmm. I can't put into words how I feel by knowing what I overcame because it's inside of me. Mm -hmm. Kevin shared with me the other day to read a book or listen to a book, chapter six, uh, Power of Now, Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle, or however you, say, however you say that. And what's interesting is like, it's a great, it's a great book, um, but I already knew that without knowing that. You know what I'm saying? Like I've had this feeling of what it is, but it's, there's this power and there's this, there's a, a beam of light that gets woke up inside of you that puts you in a state of consciousness mm -hmm. and the ability to just be. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm happy all the time. This doesn't mean I'm sad all the time. This doesn't mean that I'm angry. This doesn't mean that I'm love. It doesn't mean that I'm joy. But it's to be able to be in this place where you're sitting in a, a, a just pool of power where you get to choose where you want to go for the day. You watch this with me all the time. Yeah. Some days I just want to just chop heads. Yeah. Some days I just want to love people. Inside, it's always me. But one of the questions that was asked to us in the event we were in the uh, the workshop that we did the other day was like, what is I'm a comeback? He drew it up on the circle and he wrote it. He was like, what is it? Because mm -hmm. you haven't defined that. But I have defined it. It's been inside of me the whole time. Like this beam of light, this energy of light that I want out. I've told the 16th of my story. We've told the 16th and a fracture of your story. We haven't even told like, because we, we put stories out. We don't want people to see our life. We don't want to do it for the grand. We've talked about this over and over and over, right? Over and over. But the reality of it is, is that like we have what people want. And it's not about we, meaning me and you, but it's about we as a people. It's not about me, not about you, not about just yeah. us. People shouldn't be us. They should be them. But they're afraid to unlock them, yet they're high performers every day in their life where they've got this desire and this drive to rise every single day, but they smolder the fire. Sure. Right? And they put it out. People don't know what they don't know, too. That was a really, when we had that conversation the other day when you were brushing your teeth and I was in the bed and I had said something along the lines of, you know, I, I didn't know that this world of self-development and wanting more and asking the right questions and how do I elevate myself, I didn't know this existed, right? And so what's really exciting is, of course, the people who are searching for a comeback, which is epic, but the people who need I am a comeback that don't even know they need it yet. To me, that is so powerful because I was that person, you know, coming off of getting divorced and, and living in a smoke-filled apartment that I could afford with freaking the $17 that I was, you know, sure. it was, it was just, and then I met you and of course you introduced me into this whole different world of, you no, know, you can, you can ask more of yourself, Kendra, it's okay. And you know, you can go get more and you can be more and you can, there's questions that you need to ask yourself. And once I started doing that, I became obsessed and addicted to all of the good and the soul searching in my life and doing it along the side of you, which of course made our relationship so uh, undeniably, you know, strong, whole. whole, whole yes. is a word you should use. Great that. word. Um, but yeah, just giving it to the people that, that know they want more, but don't know what that means. That was me. I always remember I would sit in my freaking disgusting smoke-filled apartment, the two girls sleeping, and I would say, I, my, this is not, this is not yeah. my life. This isn't it. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't even know what that means, but I know I meant my life. This, these girls' life are meant for more, right? And so for those people that are out there and then women, men, whoever are thinking the same thing, okay, well, how do I go about this? Where do I start, you know? What an, what an amazing opportunity that I'm a comeback can now expand and give that to those people too, you know? Because you don't, you don't to, in, in my opinion, yeah, there's people that have hit rock bottom and they've been so hurt and they've had this massive pain. You know, that's your story. My story, you know, maybe a little later on is that way, but um, not everybody has to hit rock bottom to be, in a, to be a comeback, you know? And so that's really to, to offer that to people who want to do better, that uh, want this incredible, incredibly filled and purpose-driven life every single day, that's, it's amazing to be able to offer that now, you know? Yeah. I mean, so. <clears throat> what is it? Uh, Tim Grover's book. I don't, you might not know this, but you guys do cooler, closer, cleaner. 
I think is what it is, right? These are types of, of performers, right? There's a cool one mm. that's pretty good. There's oh, a, he's the guy who talks about Kobe and yeah, 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 yeah. Michael Jordan. But like, so looking at that from different tiers inside of people, I mean, there's even a bunch of subs guys that are not even, you know, coolers or guys that, that don't make it. But if you look on the board over there, we've got top producers is kind of the way that high performers, oh, yeah. top producers, and then people who aspire and want and desire but yes. lack the courage or the know-how to go after what it is that they want. Yes, they have a I love feeling that inside. So, so that like this is happening right now while we're filming this thing. Like mm -hmm. this thing is changing. I don't know why Kevin hasn't filmed any ads. I don't know why we're not closing anything yet. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like where I'm at right now, we're moving too slow. But, of course, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but we're gonna try to do it the right way this time because we're actually not that I've done things the wrong way, but. I've, You've done it. I've not way. done it the wrong way or the long way. I've just done it a way that. You've just done it one way. It one way, and now yeah. we're opening it up, right? So. <laughs> I share that today because like there's still this thing that I want people to get when they listen to this. There's there's an experience that I believe every person should have an experience uh, for themselves. Yeah. Not my not my life, not James's life, not Kevin's life, not your life, right? Not the thousands of men that we help life, but for them there's this, this energy and there's light inside and anything less than your best, this sounds cliche, is just not good enough. Right? And it's, it's true, just though. not good yeah. enough. Yeah. Like, why would you want to slide into death or heaven or wherever you end up with not playing all in? Right. That's been like the one of the biggest, the biggest strokes. So we, we're talking right now about like what is I'm gonna come back for. And there's a side of me that's like, it's for everybody. Sure. But it's not. But it's not, yeah. Which, but I'll tell you what, making it for high performers, high producers, men, women, children, people who want to win and navigate life. People who are not going to submit and take a need to the government right. shutting them down. Right. I, I know this, I won't go down that side, but like people who will stand for what they want to stand for as the world gets tough will like lead and rise and build their own kingdoms and just never quit, never die. That's who I want to reach. Absolutely. And for me, sometimes I struggle back and forth because I like, I want it to land on everybody, but then I realize when we try to help everybody, then my inbox gets flooded of the nastiest, weakest, sure. saddest messages of people who don't actually want change. Right. It sounds really good to say you want change, but at the end of the day, when you re realize the required work to change, people have a tendency to revert back to their old victimized mentalities. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, let's talk about that real quick for a second. Do you think, do you feel like people who have victim mentalities can break it? <sighs> I believe that there is a comeback inside of everybody. I truly, I truly do believe that. I think that people who have lived their life with victim-filled mentality I think it's hard for them to change again because I think of how long well it could be if it was somebody who's done it for 40 50 whatever years that's a story you've told yourself that everything everything else is everybody else's fault and I should take no responsibility for any of that I don't know if I could help somebody like that I I I don't think that would ever be for somebody for I'm a comeback because I, fi <laughs> I find myself <clears throat> every now and again I'll run in my, I'll run into a situation where I come up on somebody who is has that mentality mm, mm -hmm. right and they end up getting in proximity to me sure. and actually being able to say a couple words to me and i find myself sometimes when i deal with those people just smiling and having this like just smiling and nodding not in agreeance but almost having an out-of-body experience yeah because i don't want to participate in that conversation it's just one of those things where we if, people with victim mentality or, you know, the world is out to get me and everything is everybody else's fault and I will never take responsibility because X, Y, and Z, right? Uh, people like that, again, if somebody so chooses to come up and have a conversation or say something, it's just one of those things where you all you can do is smile and bid them farewell because sure. I, I have nothing for you. You and I see the world so differently that no matter what I say, no matter what you say, we will never be in agreement. So, great. Thank you for sharing your piece with me. Going about your life. That's mm -hmm. that's it. What do you think it takes to be a comeback? Like, like so you got you got. We talked about having a victim mindset. Yeah, probably not going to work for you. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. E to each 
each person can come to their place of choice and their own power, their own decision to figure out if they have, you know, they have dominion, but to use it or not, mm -hmm. they can figure out where they're at. But then once you've made a shift and you made a pivot, what does it take to make this identity, in your opinion, become their identity, right? Like what, what, what's required? Radical honesty, <laughs> which you so put out, SFL. Yeah, I'm trying not to swear these days. I know, let me see, look at me go. Um, Stop freaking lying, man. Stop freaking lying, dude. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> um, I would definitely say that is a massive component. Sure. And that's just it happens to be one of the. <laughs> no. it, it is the code. It's the core. The code tenet. of it's, yeah. I was gonna looking for the look, word. There's code the comeback come seven, back. but there's the core of basically you have to stop fucking lying. Although I don't want to swear, maybe that's the only time that I will learn to be able to use that because it just doesn't hit the same. It doesn't, yeah. Because it's not about telling lies on the outside. It's being able to look inside of the mirror and just have a radical shift inside of you that's like, oh, I'm going to do something about this. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Right. So once you stop lying, what else? <sighs> I definitely think that you have to be committed to wanting to, to follow a new desired path, a new committed to change, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I would say that is a massive proportion of being a comeback. You know, you can't just say, uh, otherwise if you were just to say, I wanna change, and of course I wanna change, and then you're not doing the required work and you're not disciplined enough to get through and get up and do what is required. Sure. You know? Discipline, discipline will, will and can grow. It becomes a sure. skill, right? Habit, skill, identity, artistry, like it becomes something you do. A lot of people, you, a lot of people don't create discipline in that day, but you can take commitment in that day. Sure. You can't create di discipline in one day, but you can make a commitment inside of a choice. So this is exactly, I'm glad you said that because um, if I'm looking at everything we've done in, in my life or everything I've done in my life, it has been, stop fucking lying is the code that I've lived by, Yeah. but it has been committed beyond everything I have For to sure. go a way that sometimes is so cloudy, so dark, so murky, so hard that I don't even know if I can see the other side, but I'm committed to that because I just know it's there. It's like an yes. all knowing inside of me that I have to be more. Yes. That is the that is the feeling you were talking about when you're laying in your bed before you met me with the two girls in smoke filled. Yeah. It might not have been that intense, but there was this peace inside of you because your soul wasn't broke open wide and your heart wasn't ready to accept me or maybe it was ready for me because you didn't know me yet, but like yeah. you were at this place where you're opening and growing but you had a commitment inside to say, you know what, there's more to me than this. You wanna know what's interesting is I always had this very eerily calm spot, no matter you know, when I was desiring a better life and I, I, I was always so calm about where I was um, because I knew, I knew, I, don't, I can't tell you how I knew, but I just knew that this was not gonna be my situation forever. I knew that I was going to you know, I didn't know I was going to find you, you know, but I just knew that this was temporary, that I was going to be fine, that everything was going to work out. And uh, so I can't explain it, but. So would that be called faith? Ah, uh, yes. You didn't even call it faith back then. Though. I didn't. I wouldn't have called it that. I don't know what I would have called it, but yeah. Just knowing? Just a knowing. That's a whole other topic, a whole other co like concept. Could we be, talk yeah. about faith and knowing, faith and knowing, faith and knowing. You have to know where you're going to go. Yeah. What about someone out there? We'll just go from a woman's perspective right now who's feeling super, super down and out. Yep. I'm sure you've had moments like this mm -hmm. and she doesn't want to keep going. Sure. Because I'm not going to think of many people. The broken relation, broken marriage, father doesn't pay child support. Sure. She's trying to work in three jobs, trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. What would you tell that person? Like at the end of the day, you yeah. work in three jobs, you come home and there's fucking Play-Doh on the ceiling and like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like play, you got to cook the food, you got to do You know, that laundry. was me. That, that, that woman was me. I found myself. That's why in, I said that. Yeah. I found myself in a position where I felt that my options were limited. So I, I, I suffered silently in this place where... I didn't want to be. I wanted to escape so badly. I didn't want to leave my my situation because it's it was something that I had become accustomed to. Like I wasn't working. I was at home with my kids and I was constantly selling myself on the story as well. As long as I'm with the girls, then anything else that is happening, like I can look past it. And 
that wasn't right. You know, I was, I was selling myself on that I deserved to be in a, a completely crappy marriage of, of unhappiness, of unf like, it was just a terrible way to sell myself on that. But, um, but I will tell you that the hardest and most necessary shift that you can make is deciding and knowing that you deserve better because you do. Whoever you are, you deserve more. Your life is worth more. If it's not sitting right with you in some way, shape, or form, or if you are selling yourself on this is just my life and this is how I have to accept it, you are telling yourself a lie. And life is so much grander and more fun. And the love of your life is out there. You know, I think so often I've had these these reflecting thoughts on if I would have if I would have stayed if I would have stayed and I just would have said you know what it's fine I'm just gonna sit and be the, the quiet housewife and my girls are fine but even if I hated my marriage and everything else was a disaster I never would have found you I never would have had this amazing life I never and so it, it, it it's coming from a true comeback mm -hmm. of me my life story in so many different ways of it's it can be scary but when you take that leap of faith you know you the net will catch you sure. you know and and that was one of the greatest things and scariest things i've ever done and i didn't know i didn't have a plan okay i didn't have i'm a comeback to tell me hey listen you're going to be all right i didn't have people around me that were like hey this is a this is a path that you can follow because um, if it's as long as you can stay focused on this, you know, I, I figured it out on my own and I had no idea how I did it. Sure. No clue. I just knew that I wanted out so badly and that I knew I deserved more and I made this radical shift. I want to make a, a, a point here though. Yeah. But you didn't say you were entitled to more. You're, you're using a yeah. different word. I knew I deserved more. Yeah. But I was not entitled to it. Yeah. Meaning that it wasn't given to me. Right. Like was you, you wouldn't have got this life. If you like felt uh, maybe feel like I owed you, oh yeah, or that no if you way. didn't do your part, if you didn't submit, I know a lot of women probably have a hard time hearing that, but like sure. submit to the fact of like here's where we're going. I mean, I, after I ghosted you, which is we've talked about before, but like mm -hmm. for those couple of weeks because it was so good, you're like, you know, I don't want to be first, I don't want to be second, I just want to be part of like mm -hmm. of your of your life, which puts you up here because you understood where we were at. Now that has shifted, sure, right, um, shifted inside of our life, but that was years ago. You did the work required on you to be able to be an equal right. in my thinking and in my categorizing of what matters to me inside of my life. It was, it, was, it was a huge turning point for me once I did find you and I made the decision to leave and then I moved out on my own and I went to college and I did everything, literally did everything on my own, start over blank from scratch. And I didn't know what I was doing, right? I didn't know. I just had this intuition of, okay, this is what a better life to me looks like so far, right? Mm -hmm. And then I did the work. I was doing intentional movements on bettering myself every day, you know? And then I found you and that totally like stacked up. You gave me a whole new path and a whole new guidance of like, hey, hey baby girl, like this is what I do for a living. Let me show you how to do this 10 times faster. Well, you at, know? The, at the time, I was just proving the fact that it might work. There wasn't too many people trying to listen to us, but we were, we were doing okay, right? We 2018. But, we, but we I mean, okay. even even just back then, when obviously it's not what it is now. I, I knew that I was going. Back to you the commitment, knew. I knew where I was going. Yes. I said, hey, you want to come alongside me? Like, And I took that as absolutely I do. So I need to elevate myself. I need to learn. I need to grow. I need to I need to do everything that I can do to deserve this life, right? And how does that make you feel? It makes me feel so empowered. I feel so proud of myself. Deeper, deeper inside. I, I don't know. I there's, don't know. There's, it's in your belly. Like when you know that when you wake up every day and you come out and you look at me mm -hmm. and you're sleepy in your eyes and I'm out there doing my stacking, stacking or whatever I'm, with the fire going or whatever's going on inside of that morning and you take that moment around where you take your first, your first breath and you're taking it all in mm -hmm. <clears throat> through all the craziness, all the ups, all the downs. And what did James said, the madness. Yes. said something in the madness of me, like in this world that has been created by just me fucking being me. So you could be you. Mm -hmm. There is so much freedom, which comeback truly is after every day inside of their life that it lights you up and puts you in a place where you need to immediately hug me. Not from a place of love, although you love me, but from knowing that like this is my life. How does that feel? I mean, when you put it that way, 
and, and the, the short amount of time of this growth, it feels surreal. It really, really does. Looking back and reflecting on Kendra from seven years ago to Kendra now, in my life then, in my life now, it is. it, it sounds so silly to say, but it's literally out of a fairy tale book. Like, the place that I came from. It's all one of those romance books you read. About. It is. It's like one of my romance books that I read. It, it is seriously like that. Um, just, again, kind of broken. Broke. <laughs> broken. Not even near the amount of confidence that I have. I, I was living in such a state of like masculinity where I, I you know, survival mode. And I meet you and you show me this entire new divine way to live my life and you allow me to be me and you give me this light and you love my children and you build this you grab my hand like the leader uh, that you have always been and you're like come on like I got you let's do this together this is what it looks like I'm not going to let you fail like it's okay for you to be your most vulnerable self it's okay for you to to be who you want to be I'm still going to love you you know and we did that together I feel like because there was a lot of a lot of stories that you had to break later on when you um, but, I'm but still breaking them right now. You to, are still to, breaking to them. Go to, the, to, go to, to go to where we're going with this thing, that's why I just asked Kevin James, what stories need to be broke? I want to make sure I'm proactive and looking. But like, and there's going to be there's going to be times that are coming that are going to be heavy. Of course. I, I mean, there's been times that have been heavy. There's been there's going to be more times that are going to be heavy, and I know that. Um, I want to make a point, though, as I was letting you speak and talk so that the you know women listeners that could, or the, the guys that shows their wives or whatever out there, nothing we are talking about is a thing. Like something. It's not something. Right. It's a feeling. It's a feeling. It's a. It's a. Like, you're saying like many dudes or even women start measuring the success in the way that they feel by what they have: house, car, sure. pool, boat. Yeah, I right? didn't even mention Shoes. any of that. <laughs> so I'm getting, that's the whole point, right? Yeah. They think that that stuff makes them happy. They think that brings them joy. Here's what I've I've been finding, for me, when I'm young. And I'm sure like Phoenix probably feels this right now. Like, I want a cool car. Oh, yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, he does. I want a cool car. I got to have the cool hair. I got to have I gotta the cool live phone. in a mansion. I got to live in a mansion. And all the same things that I thought growing up. Sure. And then when it gets to the place to where now you can have all those things, you're like, well, these things don't actually really matter. Those are like, not the things that actually build you. Right. <laughs> build you internally and that you're proud of. Well, maybe you'd be proud of a car or something. I yeah, know. I mean, I actually, I don't think it would. I mean, I honestly don't care. I'm proud Dude. of where I'm going. I'm proud right. of where I'm committed to. But what I wanted to make out of the point is since this whole thing is what is a comeback, a comeback is alive. Yeah, I love it. Now, I don't know what alive looks like for everybody else, but I know what alive looks like and feels like for me. And me too. Now, and if I can get, exactly, and if we can get up every day to, together or alone or separate of what it looks like and be able to put the fucking armor on known as the comeback seven, which I do more than you to be clear for the listeners, right? Yep, yep. I have enough power and enough skill and enough habits, routine and identity. So like I push it into my family so I can protect them through the energy that I provide, the atmosphere that I create inside of my home allows you to be you. Yeah. And that is the life that I live. Yes. And that's what a real comeback does. I'm not measuring it by how many, you know, how much money I have, although I'm going to go make as much money as I can. Mm -hmm. I'm not measuring it by the amount of lives that I'm going to save, although I'm going to go save as many lives as I can. I'm not measuring it by the size of the house, but I'm going to get a bigger house. I'm not measuring it by the boat, but I'm going to get a bigger boat, right? Mm -hmm. Things like that because I have time to do it here because I'm living off of a life that I lie. I am alive because I'm trying to achieve something inside, which is complete internal freedom. Yes. And the same for you? And when same you, for me. And when you, when you start living from this place, and that's like the whole thing, I sit on calls, <clears throat> and it's so I'm so excited about running. I hate the word I told these guys this, but you know, on a universal message. But there's really no other way to put it till I come up with something new. But to be able to put something, to be able to take all these pain points, the pornography. You wish to have omnipresence. Omnipresence everywhere in what we do, 100%, right? That's through all different verticals. What I'm looking at is I want to take the greatest pains that people are afraid of that they don't want to talk about or they're embarrassed or they're ashamed yes. or they're guilty. And I want to just go exploit them because I had them all. I want to live so fucking free that I'm unashamed and unapologetic for where I was because who I am is enough light for everybody around. Being able to talk about me being so broke and me being able to talk about living in a smoky, disgusting apartment with two kids. I, um, without, without living this I'm a comeback aliveness until we come up with a better word. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> um, I would have been so ashamed to admit that that's where I came from. But now 
I literally love talking about it. I'm like, damn, you're stuck in a really shitty position that you want to that you want to elevate from. I was there too. Let me show you how I did that. You know, and I, I feel because there's a piece that's coming that I don't even think you know. And I I said it in the meeting. Uh, James was there, but Kevin was there. If all you listeners that are here or that pay attention on the other side of these cameras, I talk like they're in the room. But yeah. um, I know that there's a there's a whole segment of the world that is younger than me, that is your age, that wants what you have, that is waiting to hear how to have it. Yeah. I mean, we can tell them it's really easy. Just click on Instagram and like all their posts of their son, and then you'll be able to get them. Yeah. Like no, but like, <laughs> I got tricks. But like, but like the real, the real thing is, yeah, like, the real. there's going to open up this thing that's going to allow you to take the growth that we've done over the years. Now that this opens up, and put it into a place where there's your this own, I'm a comeback woman's movement. It has taken mm -hmm. us time to get here. We tried it. It didn't work, but it did work. You know, it, it did work, but it was forced. I still wasn't comfortable enough with talking about my pains and the stuff that I had been through. I was still ashamed and still hiding from that fact. So when I was talking and when I was trying to coach, you could tell, I could tell, maybe they couldn't, but I could tell it was reserved. Now I'm in a spot where I'm I'm wide open. I'm, I'm ready to pursue that because I know, I know that it works and I know that if it helped me and I get to live this incredible life and with you next to you, then if, if it only helps even one person. Right. To me, that's like the ultimate. It's already helped more than one person. I know it has. <laughs> but the, uh, that's like my, that's like my least favorite saying. I don't want to help one person. I want to help all the people. But I know you do. People always say like, oh, if I could only help one person, bro, you could help one person today. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. So don't wait to, this is not for you, but like no, for I know, people have to true. listen and like they would mm -hmm. love to make an impact on somebody's life. And then you, you know, you, you start by looking in the mirror and then finding the person next to you. Yeah. I love that. Whether it's mom, dad, brother, sister, child, doesn't matter. Right? Everybody has somebody to love. Mm -hmm. You can make their life just a little bit better by pouring something you have into them. That's true. Yeah, I love that. Last question. Mm -hmm. The run we're trying, the run I'm going on, the numbers I speak about, the lives, the 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 moves we're making. Does it scare you? You know, I got to be honest. I don't think I fully comprehend what it really entails. The the numbers and the things that we talk about achieving, I don't know if I can fully grasp what that means. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. Um, maybe I'm sitting in a place where ignorance is bliss, where I'm just it, like, screw it. What do we got to do? Then let's go do that. If I think too much about it, I might scare myself and start to retract. I don't know. But it's going to go one of two ways. <laughs> it's going to be super easy because we took on the hardest. Like we don't know this to be true yet. We took on the hardest beast, right? Like, like alcohol. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe that just fine. May maybe it gets easier just when we fine. open up their verticals. <laughs> Or it's going to be just compounded every time we take a new person, just more pain. And at the end of the day, I'm built for this shit. And you know what? Because I am a reflection of you, I am also built for it. Luckily, a better looking reflection. <laughs> Some days. Some days. <laughs> now, when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> when, I wake, when I wake up in the morning, uh, maybe not then. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I got for this week's episode. I think this was great. Um, it's good. I think I, I want to put, uh, if people listen to this to the end here, Again, share this thing for us, and then people that have stories, reach out to us. Maybe we can start interviewing some people, get them inside here. I would here, love that. Share this thing, because we don't ask for anything from this, although soon there will be things coming. I know it bounces all over the place, but that's the coolest thing about living my life and chasing freedom and doing it, is I can do whatever the fuck I want. There are no rules, there are no boundaries. It's just the life that I want to live. That's it for this week's episode. We'll see you guys next week. Peace! <laughs>